Yeah, we'd like to welcome you to our winter show. Uh, we've got four artists here. There's uh, Gabriella Vicari, a sculptor and painter and drawer from Italy, uh, from Luca. We have Mike Heine, uh, the son of Harry Heine, a famous watercolor artist. There's Lima Havlik, who uh, does some beautiful sculptures, and there's myself, uh, David Hunwick. Uh, this is called The Winter Show, and we've got an incredible display of paintings, sculptures, drawings, and uh, we're on this weekend, and we decided to actually extend the show for a whole month of January as well, and we're gonna be doing some uh, evenings where you can come and talk to the artists and find out about how they do their, their work and so on. So we're really excited about what we've got, uh, some stunning work. This is where Italian Renaissance meets modernism, and uh, so when you come down here, which I really encourage you to do, you're going to see an incredible display of historical approaches to sculpture and painting, and also more modern techniques as well. You interview me. Okay, I interview you. Interview this, is me. My, this is my friend, Gabriele Vicari. Right. I've taught him everything that he knows. And uh, no, he said, it, I did. Yeah, I taught you, you everything. Yeah, I taught you everything. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, I taught him everything. Now he's uh, from Italy, from Luca, and uh, here's some of his paintings. Um, so, do you want to say something about your work? My painting, my, my... I don't know, what do you... This is his uh, still life with pomegranates. How do you say that in Italian? Ah, pom pomegranate. Melagrani. Melagrani. This Melagrani. Melagrani. This is Melagrani. Melagrani. With oil painting, and... Um, I don't know. Look at the He's camera, Gabriel. Look at the camera. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and this one, a beautiful uh, picture of these onions. Fantastic. Uh, there's a lot of very traditional uh, techniques here with the use of light and color. A lot of, many of the pigments he would mix himself as well. And uh, beautif beautiful uh, still life. Traditional composition in Italy is uh, just a look in Italy style. Yeah. Okay. Can we okay. look at some of your drawings? Yeah. Uh, this is one of Gabriel's drawings over here. Uh, <laughs> this one we call the uh, Mother of Arabia. Yeah. And uh, so it's a graphite uh, on paper. Not graphite, and it's carbon. Carbon oh. painting on the paper. Yeah, I did it with a different uh, grammar. It's a different... Uh, Hard, strong, uh, yeah, different tones. It's like different uh, tone, yeah. So it's like as a carbon painting. I use the paper for so shadow. How long, how long did this take you to make everything? Uh, just uh, two, three days, not too much. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I just uh, stop before finish very well. Yeah. Gabriel yeah. does many uh, portrait commissions here in Italy uh, for churches, for private patrons. Yeah. Uh, and it's also very well known for his sculpture as well. So maybe we can have a look at some of your sculptures. Yeah, sure. Uh, we have a few of these uh, clay studies here. You want some bronze? Yeah, you, you, you want to see the, this? This is a, just a, just a sketch. This is, a, just a, this is a maquette for a larger maquette. sculpture. Just say, yeah. So everything, uh, everything Gabriel does starts as a, a drawing and then he makes it out of clay as a maquette. Yeah. And then if somebody wants to commission the piece, then he would make the, the real thing. So yeah. this is just a simple sketch, clay just sketch. Just the idea of uh, Cupid. So this Cupid. Cupid, yeah. So you got the wings here. Yeah. And just uh, the idea Cupid is looking uh, down on the fly. Yeah. Okay. Just for the idea, just a skate. Yep. And over here we have our bronze figure. So Helena. We call this one Helena or Helena. But um, I guess it really speaks for itself. It's kind of a, again, very traditional Italian style. And then we have some more pieces in here. So we got these. Uh, this is uh, this is actually um, Narcissus. He's got his, he's studying his own reflection and uh, admiring his own beauty. And uh, so again, she, she looking the water, reflection the water. Yeah. 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 This is terracotta and the patina. Yeah. And this one over here is. Um, uh, this one we call the kiss. And um, again, very classical style. You've got the serpent and they're just entwined together. Yeah. And. Uh, on, the, on the ocean. On the ocean, yeah. yeah. Great. Yeah. Wonderful. 
and uh, maybe we can show you the, the large torso figure that you have. Uh, yeah. This piece I make with model, just uh, for composition, for this idea, just for study very well anatomy and uh, movement. Yeah. And I make the, this is in plaster, and uh, I make the color on for patina, yeah. Bronze patina, yeah. It's a looking bronze. Yeah. It's beautiful. Yeah. It's a beautiful model for this. Yeah, it's nice. It's really important the model for make the nice uh, piece. I know. And just uh, I, it's nice for uh, learn more anatomy. It's good. Yeah. <laughs> Well, uh, the show actually started, uh, I met David probably uh, two or three years ago. And, uh, and you know, he has this big studio space. And I've been invited a number of times to come down and do life drawing classes and things. And I, and I just never got around to it because it's always on Sunday. And I'm always running around on Sunday doing something else. So, so I've known about the space for a long time, but I've never actually been down here. And about two weeks ago, uh, David contacted me and he had a room full of sculptures. And he said, you know, I've got all this, uh, all this space, all this wall space, and uh, no paintings on it, so do you happen to have some paintings? And with the economy, the way things are, I've got lots of paintings sitting around at the studio, and, and, uh, and so I, I said, sure, I'll you know, count up what I have. And I, uh, I wound up getting 30 paintings together. And uh, I was saying to David, too, that a lot of these paintings are, are more personal paintings because they are the experimental pieces that uh, uh, you tend to put into galleries and, you know, they don't sell, so they come back to your studio. And, and, uh, and, and, and big paintings, too. Big paintings are difficult to, uh, to sell these days. And so a lot of the larger paintings that I've done over the years uh, that have uh, eventually wound up their way back to my studio or in this in this particular show. This painting here was uh, was over in um, Vancouver for I think about uh, six months, the last six months, and uh, you know came back recently and into my studio and that, including a, a number of other large paintings, is. Uh, uh, is included in this show, and this show is a very sort of strange collection of, of, uh, of uh, different times in my life too. You know, there are some paintings that uh, date back to when I first started painting, which was a different style uh, and a different approach to what I'm painting now. So it's really kind of a, an interesting thing. It would be interesting to lay the show out in chronological history because going from uh, uh, the older painting or the newer paintings to the uh, older paintings, you see quite a, uh, a progression. So uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a, a nice show and I, what I particularly like about the show is uh, the fact that it's in a studio, it's in a working space and, uh, and it, it's much more comfortable, it feels much more uh, 
personal uh, to uh, to see the chalk dust on the ground and the, the clay and see the walls with uh, with clay mark on them and stuff. This is a working studio and it kind of reminds me of uh, being back in art school, you know, involved in with a bunch of artists in their place of work. So, yeah. One of the pieces I made when I came back from Italy, I was uh, in Tuscany over the springtime and I was doing a lot of, uh, I guess, research or visiting many churches there is because that's mainly where the artwork is. And when I came back, I started working on this piece and it was kind of unconsciously developed, but the idea of the Madonna theme seemed to come through this piece and also I was playing with the whole concept of fragmentation of the figure which is a theme I've had for a while now with my work um, but it's only in hindsight that I really saw that there was this connection between the imagery that I was seeing when I was in Italy and then bringing my new way of working to that if you like um, so this one I call Silent Memories um, she's suspended by the chains you can either see that it's her being held by them or maybe imprisoned by them um, but she's peaceful so I, I kind of try and leave some of the interpretation to the viewer more this is one of my bunnies so I call this one the thinker uh, kind of based a bit of tongue-in-cheek based on Rodin's uh, sculpture of the thinker uh, I've actually done a series of five hairs now and um, this is probably one of my favorites I think and uh, a little bit looser in style and um, a bit more fun and uh, I just like the the hair I find them very interesting animals are very mythical very mysterious in many ways and uh, so it gives you a lot of license to play with that as an artist but still use the aesthetics of the the line and form of the, of the animal as well so uh, so I'd say this is one of my favorite pieces